Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create an ocean wave pattern in Illustrator. Before we get started with this project, let's have a look and see what it is that we're trying to achieve. What we've come here to do is to create this sort of wave pattern. Along the way, we'll create some other wave patterns, but this is the basic one that I really want to show you how to do because it is quite complex. But we're going to make it out of a simple S shape, so we're going to start with that. To start, I'm going to choose File and then New. I'm just going to create a brand new document and I'm going to turn the grid on. So I'm going to choose View, Show Grid. Now I'm going to switch to the blue color that I want to use. So I'm using that as my stroke and I don't want any fill at all. I'm going to choose the pen tool. I'm going to draw my S shape. So I'm going to start at the intersection of two lines and drag upwards, holding the shift key as I do so that it's constrained to an upwards direction. About four of these little boxes across here, I'm going to click and drag downwards. I'm going to go down about as far as I went up previously. So that's given me a nice little semicircle. About two boxes across from the starting point here, I'm going to click and drag and I'm going to drag in an upwards direction so I'm creating a sort of tangent to the line. And then all the way over here at the end of this curve, I'm going to click and drag downwards. And again, I'm going to hold Shift key just to constrain that to a nice direction. And then I'm going to let go of the mouse and just call this good for now. Now this middle point, I do want to adjust a bit. I don't think it's quite as nice as it should be. So I'm just going to adjust it before we go any further. Now we need to test the line. So I'm going to select the selection tool, select the line and start dragging and then add the Alt key to make a duplicate and add the Shift key to make sure that I'm moving perfectly horizontally. And I'm just going to drop this line into position and check the shape of my wave because this is what my wave is going to be. And if I'm happy with it, I can just get rid of the extra shape for now. Before I go any further, I'm going to make sure that these starting nodes and the ending node are directly over this line. So I'm just going to zoom in and just check this. And this one's not quite low enough. So I'm just going to pull it down a little bit. So we've done that now and let's just zoom back out again. So at this point, we have a shape that we could actually make some wave patterns from. So I'm just going to target the shape and let's go and create a pattern, object, pattern, make. We're going to use this same pattern process throughout. So it's a good time to get a little bit of practice with it. We're going to choose brick by row. And for now, I'm going to choose an offset of a half. I'm going to wind down the width. What I'm going to do is click in this little box here and then use the down arrow key on my keyboard to decrease the width. And what I'm looking to happen is for those two points to overlap to make my wave. And then I can adjust the height if I want to. I can make it closer or further apart. And when I'm happy with this basic design, I can click Done and I've created one pattern swatch. Now we could do something similar this time by applying some more interesting effects to the line. For example, I could use this brush and I could choose a non-uniform shape for it as well. And if I open up this panel here, this is the options for the selected object. So I can do things like flipping the brush stroke across the line, flip it differently across the line and just adjust its size perhaps to get a different effect. Not really too worried about the size here, but I do like to flip it along the line. So now that I've done that, I've got a shape again that I could make a pattern from, object, pattern, make. Again, we're going to choose brick by row. We're going to use about a half. We're going to decrease the width until these two shapes overlap. And we sort of join up the point to make the wave. And then we could adjust the height to suit. 
I'm quite happy with the look of this right now, so I'm just going to click Done. So there's a starting point for creating wave patterns, but we've come here to make something quite a bit more complex than this. So I'm going to go back to my starting design and just make sure that this is a one point line as it was originally. And now let's have a look at creating a more sophisticated pattern. For this more complex design, I'm going to start by selecting over my shape and I'm going to hold Alt and Shift as I drag a duplicate of the shape out here. And I'm just going to place it on top of itself so that we've now got this wave shape. I'm going to select over these two anchor points here, the two that I can join together, and choose Object and then Path and then Join. And that'll join that into a single path. Now I'm going to fill the path, so I'm going to click here and fill the path with the exact same color as it is stroked with. And now I'm going to create a rectangle and I'm going to make my rectangle the same size as my shape, so it's going to have the same width as the original shape. I'm just going to double check that I've got that right by selecting both shapes and just trying the left and right align and just making sure that nothing moves. And nothing did move, so I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to select over the entire shape, choose the Shape Builder tool, and now join these shapes together. So I'm going to join here and here. I want to get rid of this one, so I'm going to Alt click on it. I'm going to get rid of this one too, Alt click on it. Now I don't want to get rid of this, so don't get rid of that because you're going to need that in a minute. Let's just reselect the direct selection tool. I'm going to get rid of these two little extra paths. They might you might find that you get those little extra paths if you do just delete them. Now this piece here is just a little bit more of a concern. First of all, it's a filled shape, so I'm going to start by unfilling it. But you can see that you might end up with a border on it, and we don't want this. Now you might be lucky and not have it, and you may be unlucky and you do get it, so I'm going to show you what to do with it if you do. I'm going to just get zoom in here so that we can see it really clearly and go for the scissors tool, which shares a toolbar position with the eraser tool. You want to hold your mouse over the anchor points that you want to get rid of with the scissor tool selected. So just make sure that you get the right path. It's this top path that I want, not the bottom one. So I'm just going to click over this anchor point here with my scissors tool and let's just test and make sure that, yep, that path is open, but let's go and make sure that the other end is too. Well, it's not, so let's just put all of that back together again and let's try and make sure we position our mouse pointer in the correct place. So I'm just going to zoom out and pull the shape in and see if now I've managed to free up this path, which I have. So now I can select it and delete it. Got a couple of little one, yep, two little anchor points still left there. So now we can just zoom out and let's see what we've got. I've now got my basic shape that I want. The only problem is, is I need a little piece cut out of this. So we're going to grab all these shapes and just group them, do object group, because this little piece is by itself and if you don't group it, it won't travel with the others. Now, again, I'm going to make a duplicate of it, so I'm going to hold Shift and Alt as I drag a duplicate of this shape out of the way, and I'm going to position it over the top of itself. And what I want to do is use this second shape to cut this piece out of the shape, so that's all I've come here to do. I'm going to select both shapes. Again, the Shape Builder tool, just come in here and press the minus key because that now removes that piece. Now, I don't want to join these or anything else. I only used this second piece as a template for cutting out that hole. So now I can just get rid of the template piece that I no longer need. This is one of my colored pieces. I need a second one and I need it in a lighter color. So again, I'll just 
Alt drag to create a second copy of my shape and this time I'll go ahead and select each of the pieces and recolor them. So I'm just going to recolor them a lighter blue. Might help if I actually selected them first and give them a lighter blue stroke as well. So there's the main piece selected and colored and this piece just needs its stroke. And so you can see that we've now got two pieces of our pattern exactly the same. One of them's dark color and one of them's light. Now I'm just going to move this piece into position. Now this bit is critical. You have to put the front piece down and to the right of the back piece. If you don't do that when you try and push them together they just don't go and it's really disappointing. So just make sure that you've got them positioned in this way and it'll be perfect. Select over both the pieces and let's just get my artboard back and choose Object Pattern Make. Now the same way as we made the pattern previously we're going to go for brick by row and usually I find that one-fifths or two-fifths works really well for these so I'm going to start there. Now the other critical piece to make sure this pattern is going to look really good is bottom and front. If you don't do that the pattern just disappears as you resize it. Again really disappointing. Um, it's easy enough to get back but just know that bottom and front will work. I'm going to click in the width and just start pressing a down arrow key because what I'm trying to do now is to bring these shapes together so they overlap. And just exactly as we did before, we're just going to stop as soon as we get that nice overlap. And now let's go to height and let's do the same thing, this time decreasing the height. And because we've got that bottom in front, you can see that these two shapes are now nicely butting up into each other to create this really nice pattern. This is what happens if you have top in front. It's just a disaster. You just want bottom in front. So now that we've got this and I think that one-fifth is quite a good offset for this so I'm just going to stay with one-fifth. All I need to do is to click done. And now I've got my pattern pieces. So let's have a look and see what we've created. So I'm just going to pop these pattern pieces out of the way, control zero to put everything in the middle, turn my grid off, create a rectangle the size roughly of my artboard and let's go and see our pattern pieces. The first pattern piece that we created was the just the general wave pattern. If I choose object transform scale and deselect transform objects and put my uniform at about 25%. This is our very simple pattern. Now the second pattern we created had a little bit more of an organic feel about it. It was this sort of brush stroke pattern and again we can use our transform scale for this and just resize it to 25%. So again, it's a ni nice cute little pattern. I quite like this one. Would certainly be one that I would be interested in using or selling as stock. The final pattern is of course this really more complex pattern and this is how it looks. Let's just resize it. And there you have that pattern piece. Now don't worry that there are lines through it. That's just a problem with your monitor being able to actually show the pattern piece correctly because there are pixels in the monitor that are just not working. If we zoomed into this we would find that it looked just perfect. So there's your pattern piece created using a simple S-curve in Illustrator. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials like this on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.